Hi everyone, and welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to start assembly on the T14 project. You may notice that this isn't the kit that I reviewed from last time, and that's because this one's a much more accurate and detailed kit of the T14, and so will serve as a much better base for our model. Without further ado, let's dive in. Right off the bat with this kit, you can see that the engineering is much more well thought out and the detail is much more crisp. Interestingly enough, when I compared this kit to the trumpeter one, the take on hole is a little thinner, shorter, and taller. The lower front plate is also on a much steeper angle. As usual, I'm going to start with the suspension elements, cutting out all 14 swing arms, sanding them, and make sure that they're all level and hopefully won't lead to any floating road wheels. This is generally the most boring part of the assembly for me. It takes forever and this is the same thing over and over again. Thankfully you don't really have to worry about cleaning it perfectly since on this kit the side skirts and the running gear are going to cover 90% of it. Now, moving on to something more interesting, let's take a look at the entrenching gear on the front of the vehicle. It appears that on this vehicle there are two individual blades instead of one long one that spans the full front of the hull. Not sure why the Russian engineers chose to do this, but it's definitely an interesting choice. I also wanted to add some interesting textures to the vehicle, which some will come later, but right now, um, a lot of the photos that I've seen haven't really had any massive textures visible, so I took the creative liberty to texture these blades. All you do is you mix some thin modeling cement with Tamiya Gray Putty and stipple it over the surface. This will add a rough, uneven, and heavy metal texture to the surface that looks really convincing. After application, any mistakes can be cleaned up with lacquer thinner. Then, the final step is to knock down some of those most aggressive and sharp textures with 2000 grit sandpaper. I've made 1000 or 600 work, but those are more aggressive. After that, I decided to finish the lower hull details before adding anything to the upper hull. So let's move around to the back. The first thing I did was to drill out the bolt holes for the external fuel tank mounts, which was fairly quick and easy. If you're not comfortable with using a Dremel tool, a pin vise is just as effective, just not as quick. I tried using the photo etch mud flaps, but these ended up being too fragile for my taste, and so I switched them out for the kit parts. Um, I did thin them down a lot so they look more accurate though, because they were pretty thick out of the box. I also added this little toolbox here, which was very simple. The only challenge was the photo etch hinges, but those aren't too bad when you get the hang of it. I'm not good enough at modeling while also filming at the same time to show that, but once the hinge tubes were rolled, it was a simple matter of inserting a wire and super gluing it so it doesn't come out, then trimming off the excess. Now let's move on to the spaced armor plate. The kit provided one would have been much easier to mount, but I accidentally destroyed it while trying to fill some holes, and so we're stuck with the PE one. To make it sit out a proper distance from the hull, I added some simple spacers made from evergreen styrene sheet. The back of this vehicle is absolutely covered in these little hooks, which need a radius bent into them. The best way I've found to do this, with really small stuff, is to take a drill bit or something cylindrical that has a slightly smaller radius than what you're going for. Then, Roll and bend the piece over the shaft, and generally with a little fiddling you can get it to look pretty decent. 
If the brass is a little thicker or tougher to bend, you may need some help with some pliers or heavy duty tweezers. Just keep working till you've got a product that you're happy with. The towing hooks were a bit of a challenge since the eyelets that they were supposed to go in were molded in it with one piece. I used a razor saw to separate it and then I trimmed off the excess plastic with an X-Acto knife and sanding sticks. I then super glued them on. Each towing ring also had a small hook that kept it from swinging around. Now for this tool rack on the back, the PE set wanted me to make a cylinder for the tool mount. I used the same method as the hinges I mentioned earlier, I just started the curve by rolling the drill bit over the part. This will help start the bending and prevent any one area from folding over and ruining the bend. After that, I wrap the piece completely over the bit and use a pair of tweezers to help form any sections that are being stubborn. In this case, I started with a slightly larger drill bit for the final radius and then moved down incrementally to help preserve the bend. There was no tool provided, and so I had to scratch build it. I used my Dremel and a little bit of sandpaper, a little like a lathe, to help shape the end. Next, I started work on the last part of this video, the tow cable management system. I had to make five of these smaller cable clasps and two larger ones. Each one is a simple U-shape with a styrene rod across and a spring with a little cap at the end. I got the styrene rod glued up and then wrapped 32 gauge stainless steel wire around the end seven times. Once I pulled the loops together and evened it out, it looked fairly convincing. After that, I drilled holes in the towing rings and threaded the copper cable through. The Voyager one was too small, so I ended up using the trumpeter version and I'm happy with the way it turned out. When threading these kinds of cables, be sure to super glue the ends to prevent serious fraying. Finally, I added these little styrene rods that were supposed to simulate bolts. The easiest way to do this is to insert a longer rod and then shorten it with an X-Acto knife once the glue had dried. And yes, I know there's a continuity error, but it made more sense to finish the tow cable section before talking about the bolts. Well, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from it and at least found it interesting. Feel free to leave a comment down below with any questions you might have, and please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, as it helps me out a ton. Also, huge thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. I'm trying to set up a way to stream some 3D design lessons for them, and if you're interested, go check out the membership options as it helps me out a ton, and you can get some awesome perks too. See you next time.